Hey guys, Dapin Lim, board certified dermatologist. Today we'll be talking about lasers and how they work in the context of acne. Now, straight from the get-go, most dermatologists would say, look, the conventional ways of treating acne, which is basically your skincare, your oral antibiotics, your anti-hormones, your oral retinoids, and all the other medications usually provide uh, more cost-effective treatments. However, for those people who don't want to take, I guess, medication, lasers can be of benefit. Now lasers, they have been, it's not new, it's been in the literature for the past 20 years and today I'll be talking about the different types of lasers and how they actually work, including the very latest laser cleared by the FDA and recently in Australia by the TGA, which is AviClear, the 1726 laser made by Kotira. So let's delve straight into it. First of all, laser treatment, how does it work? Well, let's talk about the most tried and tested laser, which is your pulse dye laser. The pulse dye laser or PDL is a vascular laser. And how vascular lasers work is to basically deliver a wavelength of light, which can be absorbed by certain chemicals in the skin. And these chemicals are basically found in your oil gland, in your sebaceous gland. So the chemical we talk about are porphyrins, and porphyrins are the ones which are secreted by the P. acnes bacteria. So what happens is that laser with a particular wavelength, in this situation, something like a 595 uh, wavelength laser, delivers intense light within a short period of time, usually within um, uh, measured within milliseconds. And this light gets absorbed by the porphyrin, it causes oxidation, causes a chemical reaction which causes destruction of the oil glands or destruction of the secondary bacteria found in oil glands itself. So we talk about pulse dye laser, we talk about vascular lasers. What has been really popular over the past 15 years is the use of low level laser emission devices. Basically LEDs, it's a play of words. When you're looking at LEDs, the one that's got the most efficacy is blue light, which is around 405 to 430 nanometers, so that's blue light. Then you have red light, which is around 630 nanometers, which is another spectrum or another peak of your porphyrin, which is released by the bacteria. So much like pulse dye laser, low level emission devices emit light. And this light is usually much more gentle compared to something like a vascular laser. The downside, however, is it takes time. Basically, the light emitting diodes will produce energy typically over five to 15 minutes. Studies have shown that if you combine both blue light together with red light, because you have two different peaks of the spectrum for porphyrins, you usually get a better outcome compared to using just blue light itself. Word of caution, for those of you who are like myself, ethnic skin, darker skin types, we have receptors on melanocytes. In other words, we have um, receptors on the pigment cells, which can, I guess, recognize blue light, and as a result, kick out more pigment. So word of caution, if you're using blue light, if you've got ethnic skin, you're more likely to be prone to post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation or darkening of skin. So with blue light and red light, you can add a Porphyrin. So we talk about porphyrins which are produced by the bacteria, but you can add a synthetic porphyrin, something like amino lubunic acid or ALA, and you can occlude it or leave it on your skin for between 30 minutes to one hour. And what happens is that this ALA, this chemical, gets absorbed in your oil glands and creates a bigger target. This is a very old treatment, but some companies have taken on board this novel treatment and basically marketed it, put it in a packet, and they call it Clarisca, which is basically amino lubunic acid or a form of porphyrins um, that's very old. Now, this type of treatment can be more effective compared to using low-level laser emission devices, which may take weeks or even if not months for efficacy. So with Clarisca treatment, you can do it more frequently, once every um, two weeks or so, and you can get a faster destruction of the um, oil gland. The downside with the treatment, obviously, is the cost, because the cost of packaging, the cost of marketing, the cost of provision of it. So certainly, that is an issue. Low-level laser emission devices have come a long way, because the Generation 1 devices were called Omnilux, but now you have many, many different um, devices, including things like Heolite. Uh, you can also have home devices and there's many home devices i've done several reviews in the past in regards to low level laser emission devices for home use so going from lasers one wavelength to light emitting diodes variable wavelength low power we can talk about ipl or intense pulse light which is also called bbl once again, there's a lot of uh, marketing with that because Cyton is a very famous company. I've got the laser, it's a very good laser, but they've marketed their BBL 
not Brazilian butt lift, but a broadband light to something what they call as forever clear. Um, it's a spin of words, really old technology. It's been out there for 20 years. And what they use is that blue light filters, in other words, blue light from different spectrums with a peak absorption of the porphyrin, which is the chemical, and they deliver that with intense pulse light. So intense pulse light, unlike lasers, deliver light within a set spectrum. So in this situation, it's usually blue light. So we talked about lasers, we talked about light emitting diodes, we talked about BBL. What other lasers can help? Well, the newest one out in the market is the 1726 um, fractional laser. It's non-ablative, so it's a wavelength that is novel. But once again, this wavelength is not new. This wavelength has actually been with us for well over a decade in the urology field. So what a company has done, which is Kotira, has used this and has delivered a, um, a, a good energy to the skin. And this non-preferentially, so when you look at the absorption spectrum, so when you're looking at lasers, they all have different absorption spectrums. When you look at this particular laser, it has a slight preferential for oil glands or sebaceous glands in the 1726 wavelength. So the guidelines for this is basically one treatment conducted monthly for three treatments. So in, in total, Unlike using, for example, um, Clarisco, where you have multiple sessions over months, this one is basically three sessions. The clearance rate to date has been very good. You're looking at an efficacy of around 85 to 90%. So when you look, look at the efficacy, it's around 85%. When you look at the patient satisfaction rate, it's around 90%. And the results have been studied all the way up to six months. So for those of you who are, I guess, more risk adverse and you're don't want to take medication, for example, your retinoids such as Accutane or isotretinoin, or if you're sensitive to topical retinoids, if you don't want to take anti-hormone medications, then certainly laser treatments could be for you. The downside, obviously, is the expense associated with laser treatment and the fact that these sort of treatments, especially with Aviclear, have only been studied to a finite time, which means recurrence can be an issue. So recurrence can be an issue for any medication, but with lasers, they don't usually give you that 100% clearing as, as what isotretinoin does, and hence recurrence can certainly be a issue. However, I'm all for it. It's one less person that I guess dermatologists need to put on Accutane. However, the cost could be an issue. So those four modalities in the main acne laser treatments. Now, there are other energy devices can, that can be used to treat acne without the need for medication, and they include RF or radio frequency. You can use single needle delivered radio frequency and how that works is that it targets the sebaceous glands itself this treatment is called agnes agnes rf it, it's really old it's probably about 12 13 years old i think it was first invented in korea the upside with these treatments is that they are very effective um, basically it's time consuming but what happens is that the operator often a technician will have to look at each individual hair follicle and basically place a probe down that hair follicle and use RF technology or RF energy to ablate that gland. So radio frequency using a probe can be helpful. Another form is radio frequency microneedling or RFM. Radio frequency microneedling, there are various devices. So everything from Infini, Intensive, Morpheus 8, Genius RF, Profound, there's a whole range. And how they work is non-selective destruction of oil, oil glands or sebaceous glands. Basically, you have a needle, it's a hot needle. So it's actually a cold needle, but it, it, it delivers radio frequency and hence it heats. So it's basically cold needle microneedling with energy devices. And what that does is that it non-selectively targets the sebaceous glands and through thermal destruction reduces the amount of sebaceous glands. The same can be done for CO2 lasers. You've seen there's a lot of literature probably about 10, 15 years ago in regards to fractional CO2 and acne. The downside, however, is the really, really long downtime with ablative lasers. Other lasers that can help include your pigment lasers, so things like Q-switch lasers and also Pico lasers. These are better for treating pigment, so in other words, your post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation from acne, and less useful for treating acne. However, they have been reported in the literature. So guys, I hope you liked that video. Just to summarize, um, if you're looking at the most tried and tested way, I think the vascular laser is the way to go. Aviclear is certainly a breakthrough um, and it has its clearance rate and satisfaction rate higher than that of low level laser emission devices and things like Clarisca. So guys, consider laser treatments. 
if you are more risk adverse, knowing that the downside is the cost and like all other treatments, the chance of recurrence is there. Please like, comment, share, subscribe. If you've had laser treatments in the past and would like to share your knowledge and your experience, chime your thoughts below. See you next time.